it doesn't matter where you go when you stop at a stoplight. People want to say, what is it? People think it's a Buck Rogers car or something like that. It's a unique sci-fi, futuristic type of vehicle. We're at Lane Motor Museum in Nashville, Tennessee. We are a collection of odd, unique, and different cars. I was always a car enthusiast. My dad was into cars. We went to car meets when I was a kid, and then I started to collect cars in my early 20s. By the time I was in my early 40s, I had collected about 75 cars. And really, my collection just got too big to be a personal collection, so I had the choice of either stop collecting cars or open a museum, and I wanted to open a museum, so that's how this happened. Cars are my passion, absolutely. The Streamliner, I knew Mark Hyman from St. Louis, who's a classic car dealer, owned it. I was always interested in it, and we worked out a deal. It's a part of automotive history. Only six were made. As far as we know, this is the only one of the six that survived. The Streamliner was created for the McCain Norris Company of St. Louis. In the 1930s, engines had to be rebuilt every 15,000 miles. So McCain Norris, they were in the money. The Streamliner traveled the country promoting the company's products, but the start of the Second World War put an end to the Streamliner's life on the road. The 1934 McQuay North, it's really a 1934 Ford and the frame to the body is made by the Hill Body Company in Cincinnati, Ohio. They built up the shape of the body with a wood skeleton framework and then they skinned the metal over the top of it. One of the unique features is the large, expansive windshield. There's no windshield wipers. Because of the aerodynamic shape of the car, the rain will flow right off. These are two vents on each side that if you open them up, it brings fresh, cool air right down to your feet of the passenger and the driver. The back is a total taper, streamlined. It's obviously, there's no rear view mirror. Access to the engine is pretty simple. There's these two large doors that you open up and then you can do whatever you need to do. So the interior is really quite simple. It has two separate bucket seats. The driver in this car actually has a little more leg room and they put the passenger seat a little farther back to give them leg room because they got the expansive dash with the eight gauges that they like to show their customers about how their piston rings were better and everything else. If you had your eyes closed, you would think you're in a 34 Ford. The chassis is the same, the steering's the same. It's probably quieter because you get no wind buffeting. It's a 30s car, it would not compare well to a modern car. It's rod operated brakes, so the brakes are pretty weak. So obviously if you're driving in traffic, you don't want to tailgate anybody because if they step on the brakes, you're going to run into them because it's not going to stop nearly as fast. Driving the Streamliner is not too bad. You're under this roof, so you're more or less out of the sun. You're really sitting in a totally shaded area, which is pretty unusual, especially for a 30s car. I like a lot of different types of cars, but I'm more interested in cars that have unique engineering characteristics. I think the best thing about the McQuay Norris is the uniqueness of the body shape. That's the type of things that really catch my attention. 